This is Echo 3, and let's continue our career mode discussion. It's been a while since I've visited this career, but since it's harvest time, I thought I would take a harvest contract. In this case, I'm going to harvest some ore from the MUN and deliver it to Kerbin Orbit, and I will also rendezvous and dock in low MUN orbit. First thing I'd like to do is just pick up a couple more technologies. I have these larger ore tanks that'll make this mission a little easier, and I will pick up this one for the bigger heat shield and landing gear, because maybe one day I'll want those too. Let's get started on our crafts. We will start by assembling our ore harvesting craft. In this case here, I need to factor that the craft it will be able to lift all the ore from the surface of the MUN and get it into low orbit. I need 2,150 units of ore. Well, those small tanks hold 300, so that's 2,100, plus the small ore tank holds 75. That will give me a little bit more than enough for the contract. I did use the symmetry hack to get seven way symmetry there with the uh, amount of ore tanks that I have. You can watch my Secrets of Symmetry video if you want more information on how to get any number of parts to be symmetrical. Uh, so anywhere from two to infinity, all ranges are possible with that hack. I'm trying to align my parts so that the center of gravity doesn't shift through the flight. Um, I did initially try putting on the large drill that is a lot more mass than what this craft really should have, so I'm going to use the small drill. It is not as efficient as the large drill. I'm not going to worry about efficiency. I'll just keep my size down, and that'll work. It, if I was wanting to do this more long term, this would not be the best option, but for this simple mission, it'll be fine. Now, we will need quite a bit of power generation and quite a bit of heat dissipation for a drill. This is more than what we need for daylight hours. Uh, one thing to note with drills is they will quit working when they run out of power. And on the MUN, you have 18 hours of daylight and 18 hours of night. And so if you want to, the drill to run all night, you have to have enough battery or some type of power generation that will get you through 18 hours of darkness. This will not, and I will have to restart the drills or the drill every time it runs out of power and I have daylight again. I'm using seven Terrier engines, which will be sufficient. Um, it won't be a gob of extra power, but it'll be sufficient to get this craft full of ore back up into orbit. I have just a decoupler there, and then I have a fairing plate that I will then attach, um, a, use a fairing to cover this up as we ascend through the atmosphere. This next stage will get me into low carbon orbit. It will finish my circularization burn. It will take me all the way to the MUN, circularize around the MUN, and it should have plenty of extra to help with the descent stage. Um, although the upper stage has enough to descend and return back into orbit, this will give me some margin for error so we can find a flat spot. The MUN doesn't have a lot of flat spots. So it's nice to have some extra fuel that you can maneuver to find a good landing site. I'm using the five meter parts from the Making History DLC, and that's gonna make a pretty good launch vessel for us. The vector engines seem to provide the right amount for the thrust to weight ratio of this craft, so I'm going for them, but I have turned down the amount of gimbal that they have. When you use the full gimbal, it will oversteer the craft, so in this case, I have just turned it down probably about 10% is really all I need for its gimbal range to safely get us through the atmosphere. Double checking my contract parameters here. So I will just make sure I have the exact craft I need for the mission. Now, because I need to rendezvous and dock in low MUN orbit, I'm gonna go ahead and make a second craft that will transfer the ore from low MUN orbit into Kerbin orbit. And I'd like to have it take it all the way down to low Kerbin orbit. Maybe I can use this ore at some point in the future, refine it, or do something with it at a space station. I, I don't really have future plans yet, but that's 
what this craft is the goal for it to be able to do I'm trying to future proof it a little bit so I need plenty of fuel on this thing and make sure I have enough thrust to weight ratio that this will be manageable I don't need a high thrust to weight ratio but I'd like at least over 0.2 um, that's just my preference here for this mission now this craft is going to be responsible for the actual docking procedure so I want to make sure it's got plenty of power both crafts are probe controlled and just make sure it's got appropriate soto panels but because I'm going to use it for docking I do want to make sure I have plenty of reaction control wheels to just maneuver this thing and point it properly and I'd like to add some RCS the reaction control system here with the RCS thrusters and the mono propellant will make uh, translation maneuvers possible you don't actually have to use this for docking it's just a lot easier and so I'm just gonna go with the easy route here especially if I'm maneuvering crafts full of ore they're gonna be heavy the translation controls just make this easier like the other craft we're gonna throw it in a large fairing but this upper stage has enough to go from low carbon orbit to mun orbit and return back to carbon orbit so I'm just gonna use the exact same lower stage from the first craft um, probably would save on design cost if I was using a mod <laughs> that needed to do that I will strut my payload in the fairing it'll keep it from wobbling around um, struts are a great way to go you can also use auto struts to help too. make sure you turn on advanced tweakables in the settings if you want to use auto struts you also have to unlock struts in the tech tree if you want to use strut, auto struts as well as we continue to ascend through the atmosphere we'll notice that this craft has no problems matter of fact this lower stage has more than enough fuel to get us into orbit on its own it could be a single stage to orbit I don't really want to do that so I will get us almost into orbit and then I will decouple and just fire the upper stage to finish circularizing which will be a pretty small burn then we'll make a maneuver to get out to the MUN if you haven't ever been to the mud before it isn't too hard um, just make a maneuver node on your low orbit if you can get into a regular low curve in orbit around uh, 75 to 100 uh, kilometers above the surface it's pretty easy put a node down drag it out about 850 meters per second and just move uh, the node around on your orbit until you get an, an encounter with the mud and one thing that I find helpful is that there is a find maneuver tool there as an option there on the bottom left that you can further refine how your maneuver is going to look uh, especially for interplanetary maneuvers when you want to be very precise uh, I find the tool quite helpful now that we have the first craft and orbit around the Mun we'll go ahead and launch our second craft it was already saved so we'll just take to the launch pad and go uh, same launch profile here it's the same lower stage so we'll should be pretty easy to get into orbit we've already got experience with this uh, try to be fairly aggressive on your launches as long as you've got at least a 1.3 thrust to weight ratio on your craft be aggressive try to be by 45 degrees by 10 kilometers up um, uh, or even by 8 kilometers up um, I can find that a little bit more efficient as well I have done some testing and generally the more aggressive you can make your gravity turn the less Delta V it will take to get into orbit um, obviously there's some odd craft designs that may necessitate some odd launch profiles but you know that that's uh, something you might have to deal with but for general for a reasonable craft like what you see me design here that are generally pretty aerodynamic go ahead use an aggressive launch profile and you should get into orbit pretty easily same thing with this we're going to get into a circular orbit around the Mun and then start thinking about where we're going to land now both of these craft are controlled with uh, probe course so I will need line of sight with Kerbin to plan all of my maneuvers and to have full control over my probes so if I ever lose line of sight I will lose control I'm also in general going to want to be working in the daylight side they do have a fair amount of battery power so I can do maneuvers at night but in general I want to be facing Kerbin and have 
daylight. Uh, similar things like with the Apollo missions, with what they wanted to deal with, they want to be on the side facing the Earth, and they wanted to work in the daylight. They didn't want to work on the night side of the moon. So, same thing. You've got to plan, you know, day-night cycles. You have to plan uh, when you have line of sight with your communications. Uh, it's all real-world things, and I, I like that the game takes that into account. So I am using my extra Delta V here to find a flat spot. And it looks like I have something right here, kind of in between these ridges. And it'll be, it'll be flat enough. I did not use my Kerbal Engineer landing guidance or any of that. Uh, it's, it's very useful. It'll give you the slope of the landing site, what biome you're going to be in. Uh, if you want to do that, it's a great mod to have. I pretty much always recommend it. You can see what I have there on the top on either side of my altitude meter that I have um, Kerbal Engineer readouts. It's just helpful. I like to use it, although the stock game has included a lot of that. With our ore reef uh, mined up and in our tanks, we're going to launch this thing back into low mun orbit. And because I made some correction maneuvers, I am in generally the same plane as the craft I'm trying to rendezvous with. So that, that's a way to make rendezvous easier is if you're already launching into the same plane. Otherwise, you're going to have to make a correction at the ascending or descending node to change your plane to match your target's plane. I am playing around here. I've used the plus orbit button to find an efficient transfer out to my other craft. And so for minimal delta V expenditure, we'll be able to get a rendezvous with the other craft. We'll, we'll get within two kilometers of it. And ultimately, I'm going to use this craft and its fuel to get as close as possible to the transfer craft um, because it needs to go from low MUN orbit down back to low Kerbin orbit. I'll use as much fuel out of this stage as possible for the rendezvous, and then it'll leave plenty of Delta V in the other craft for the rest of its maneuvers because I'll just be leaving this here in MUN orbit. I potentially could use it later. Although I don't currently have any future plans to use it for anything, uh, just for this mission, but we'll be getting plenty of funds that I don't have to reuse it for anything. As we approach, uh, my general rule is I try to burn on the target side of the retrograde marker, and that will both decrease relative velocity and decrease the distance of my closest approach. I use the RCS thrusters there to help with some translation maneuvers, and we are docked. Transfer all the ore. It's a bit of a pain in the stock game. There are some mods that can make transferring from multiple tanks easier. I'm not really using any mods in that case. Most of my mods are visual, except for Kerbal Engineer that you see. Uh, I am running Parallax right now, which has made the ground surfaces look a lot nicer. If you'd like to get that mod, it's a, it's a good one. It is a little bit more resource intensive than some of the other mods, but it does make the game look a lot nicer. I am running, I think I'm running Spectra right now for the clouds. And I've got Scatterer and Planet Shine and Distant Object Enhancement. So a lot of visual mods I'm running make the game just look a lot prettier. I am Echo3 and I will see you next time.